Hi there, this is Erne from Modeler. Welcome to today's video in which I'll show you how to utilize the power of Modeler massing generator to quickly test your assumptions about the city block limitations and regulations such as floor area ratio, site coverage and uh, height limitation directly in SketchUp. So with this in mind, let's get started. First, I'll geolocate my model in SketchUp. I'll get to go to uh, geolocation, add location, and select my city. In this case, it is Nova Gorica. Uh, I'll go here to select the region, digital globe. The location here is fine, already set up, and hit import. Now, once my uh, geolocation is set, I will also go and import some of the GIS data. This data can be either shapefile or GeoJSON. In my case, I will first go here to import the city blocks. And as you can see here, we have already set some of the uh, attributes from the city block that, uh, that will be mapped to modeler parameters. So in this case, it is the land use, permitted floor area ratio, permitted site coverage, and permitted height. I have also mapped the uses and once this mapping is done, I can also go and export the mapping so that I can reuse, reuse it at some later point. So once it's done, I'll just hit import GIS layer and I have my uh, city blocks in the model. Now, as you can see, there is this ugly clipping, which I'll fix by just going and uh, unlock the, the, this satellite image. I will just move it 0.1 meter beneath the city blocks and go back to lock it. Now the model looks good. I have my city blocks in the model, but I'm still lacking some of the context. So I'll also go here to import the buildings. Again, the mapping is already done because it was stored previously. Once it's ready, I'll just hit import GIS layer and now modeler will create me the buildings, actually the modeler parametric buildings so that I can see uh, what are the actual floor area ratios and uh, site coverages also in the city blocks around the city blocks I am focused at right now. Now, once the buildings are imported, I also want to add some uh, trees to, to the model so that it will look better. In this case, I have the, also the GeoJSON for, for this data imported. And this one is really quick because they are basically a components that, that come together with Modeler. Um, now I have my site loaded. I have loaded the, the actual buildings, the parametric buildings, and I have this empty space here, which is something or the location which I want to focus on right now. So the first thing that I'll do is I will just close the GIS data import window. I'll hit the city block tab. And now I want to first test what is already here. What are the rules that are already set for this city block? I'll just select the city block here hit the generate button and modeler will produce me some random development now as you can see maybe this is not the best solution i can just go here um, and hit the delete button because these buildings are not locked they are just created and selected and they will be erased and i can again just click on the generate and again i have a new solution that still doesn't fit very well the context of, of my site. So as you can see, there are some towers here and the development seems that it could be a bit denser. So what I'll do first is I will just go and pick some of the neighboring city blocks to check what are the actual values there. So I'll just go here to survey city block basic. And now I can see that in this neighboring city block, the FAR is 1.8 and the site coverage is 38%. In this one here, let's check it here. The site coverage is also 38% and floor area 2.0. And let's check also this one. It has the FAR 
0 0.92 and site coverage 20. So let's try first by changing the FAR of this city block. I'll go back to the city block and change it from 0 0.5 to 1. And let's see what happens when I click on the generate button. Now I have this very uniform, ugly looking development. Uh, but still something that gives me a clue that obviously um, we need to change something. So let's first test the, the changing the heights also. Um, I'll just go again to erase the buildings. I will change the heights because uh, as you can see here let's go with this one here. I can check it. It obviously the height is 22 meters so I'll just go to this city block and set the permitted building height from 12 meters to 22 meters. Now I'll hit generate again and I have a new solution which looks a bit better according to the density of my surrounding context. So this one actually looks quite nice. Maybe I can check if we can still extend the FAR a bit more because the surrounding city blocks have it higher at least those that have uh, uh, the development on it. This one is actually a sports park. So that's why it's uh, not populated with buildings here. But here, this one has an FAR of 1.8 and this one we said it's uh, two. So what I'll do is I will just go here. And as you can see here, when I set my FAR to one, you can actually see that the generator is trying to match the FAR. Um, so I'll just go and since I don't have my building selected right now, I will just go to the right click, modeler, select city blocks buildings. Now all of them are selected. I'll hit delete, change my FAR to 1.5 and hit generate again. Maybe this one looks a bit too dense or maybe I should change some of the heights of the building. So let's see what will happen in this scenario. So um, let's go to 30 meters, click generate. And yeah, this seems something like that could work actually, because as you can see, the heights according to the context here seem quite okay. And we are also getting some of the open public space. So this looks like a good starting point for, for new rules. What we can also do, since we are seeing that FAR 1.5 works quite okay, site coverage is 25%. In this case, I, I'll just go here to test it again. Um, now, this one doesn't look too good. There is, there is a lot of empty space be, between the buildings, but the generator used the strategy to, to make the buildings that are more uniform. So I'll just go delete them, generate again. And this one provides us with a, quite a lot of empty space. Again, doesn't look too good. But in any case, I'm seeing that I'm constantly getting the site coverage below 25%. So maybe this is also something we should take into consideration when we are setting the site coverage for this area, which should maybe be, let's go to 25, 25% uh, 25, uh, So again, generate, we should still get a quite a good FAR and the site coverage 20% seems good. Maybe the distribution right now, it's not the best. So, uh, and I don't have the, any, any different land uses than the defaults. So what I'll do in this case, and this will also give me some more options about the generator, how it does its job is to, to I'll go to tools, massing generator, and open up the massing generator window, uh, which gives me some basic setting about, settings about the setback. So this is the setback from the, from the city block itself. It gives me the option to set the distance between buildings. So this, these are now set at 14 meters, which in this case, it's quite good. Um, then I can set the minimum building height and the, the maximum one. And I can also set 
the building's length. So if some buildings are too long, I'll just go here to make it 60 meters, not longer. Um, and then I'll clear buildings, generate, and yeah, now no building is longer than, than 60 meters. Looks okay. But still, I want to also mix some uses here. So what I'll do is I'll go uh, to this mix of uses part of it where I can choose different uses. Right now the default is actually also if we look at the city block, it's the service. So I want to add some residential units to it. And actually the ratio between them should be three against three, meaning that they should be roughly uh, at, the, uh, at the same ratio. So I'll just hit generate. And this is something like an approximate ratio because it's uh, the values are discrete, so it cannot be exactly 50% and 50%. But still, it gives us some ability to mix uses right away when uh, generating the buildings. So let's say maybe again, I'll just go with clear buildings and I will also add some shop, for example. Of course, you are. Uh, uh, you can once the buildings are generated, you are free to start changing them. So let's say in this case, what I want to do is actually, I want to have some road between uh, these two uh, or street between these two. So what I'll do is I will just create something really quickly, something to give me an impression of a road and what I'll do now is I want to actually maybe distribute a bit this building so that um, I, I make some space for this road and make some modifications to the to the city block itself so I can go here and change it and still and again whenever I do any change to my model as you can see here the values are being updated. So right now the FAR is still 1.5. If I go here and change this building to something that will then exceed the FAR, you can see that it became red. So I need to, if I do this kind of change, I, I'll need to go here and maybe make the building a bit smaller so that I'm still within the prescribed FAR, but now I'm focused already more on the design part of what we are doing or what we are uh, defining here. So this is then the next step where the urban designer should take over the, the city block and actually start focusing on creating a high quality uh, living environment. So in this case, maybe I want to Let's say I want to align these buildings that are here to, to this new street. So for this, I will use this uh, align object extension, which will, which will help me quickly align all of the buildings to the same line. So here I'll just go uh, to this face and click shift button. Let me go closer so that all of the buildings that are now in my selection will be aligned aligned to, to this plane, as you can see here. Actually, let me also <clears throat> group this one and raise it just about a, a bit about the city block so that it will, it will look nicer. And then I need to move this building a bit. And yeah, we can, we can then easily play around with uh, changing those buildings and making sure that also the quality is there, not just the regulations are proper, but also uh, we need to think about what is it that will actually work for this space. But at least as a good starting point, we have tested the assumptions about what should be the FAR of this city block. And we see how the rules of the city block translate to the actual 3D environment. And then we can take it from there. This is it for today. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. Thanks. Bye-bye.